Hello and welcome to my next video on producing robust programs. Today we're going to take a closer look at defensive design. So what is defensive design? Well, thinking about potential problems before starting the development of a new program will eliminate many of the programs that could occur later in the process and improve the reliability of the final solution. So the idea is we start planning solutions to these problems right from the very start, rather than trying to solve all those difficulties at the end, which could be more time consuming and difficult. The key components of defensive design we're going to look at are input sanitation, input validation, anticipating misuse, planning for contingencies, and authentication. So stop this video getting too long. We'll probably do the first set in one video and the second set in another video that I'll hopefully post in a couple of days. A major source of problems is unexpected or erroneous input. If data is entered incorrectly, then our program may respond in an unexpected way, so producing unreliable results, crashing, or something else unexpected. To deal with this, we can use both input sanitation and input validation. Remember, the most unreliable component of any system is the people using it. See these lovely people here? They're smiling because they've broken your program. You said enter a number between 1 and 10, they type in 0. Now they might do this accidentally because they're not very good with computers, or they may do it deliberately because they want to crash your system or hack it in some way. Remember, you should always anticipate the misuse of your system when you design it, because either accidentally or deliberately, people will give you the wrong input, and that can really mess up your program. Input sanitation is one way of dealing with this. Input sanitation checks and modifies any input before passing it on to the next process. It kind of tidies up the input. So, for example, by removing empty white space, changing the case of characters or words, e.g. changing lowercase y's to uppercase y's. Maybe it will remove special or unwanted characters. So, for example, new line characters. It might do something like replace single quotes with double quotes. Anything that means when your program continues, that input won't crash the system or make it do something a little bit unexpected. Input sanitation is particularly important when input is needed from web forms. Some hackers try to inject special code to give them access to the web server and its data. This is what we call an SQL injection. So you can see here somebody is signing in for an online account and as well as entering their email address, they've entered some extra code here. This is what we call SQL, Structured Query Language. It's kind of the universal language of most databases. And if that manages to not be sanitized or removed in some way, it could get the database to return all kinds of private information that you won't be, you as the developer, you don't want people being able to see. So it's important to make sure that this gets removed from any input on a web form. Let's take a look at some simple examples of input sanitization using Python. So the first example here is just converting case. We've got a simple line of code, uh, the user inputs Y or N, and answers the question, do you want to continue? However, I know, although I would like the user to enter uppercase characters, users will sometimes either deliberately or accidentally enter lowercase. This could crash the next part of my program. So I'm just saying, right, well, whatever they've input, just automatically convert it to uppercase. So that way, a lowercase y will become uppercase, a lowercase n will become uppercase, and I don't have to worry about my program crashing later on. I'm sanitizing the input. In the next example, I'm just going to strip out some unwanted special characters. I've got a subroutine here, a function, that's just reading in a text file. But when it reads in the text file, I would like it just to remove any new line characters. I don't want them. That could mess up my program later on. So just take out all the new line characters and replace them with, well, nothing. And that way, 
I can worry about adding new line characters when I want later on. So moving on from input valid input sanitization to input validation, input validation is the process of checking data when it is entered to see if it conforms to a rule. So input sanitization, you're doing something to the input before passing it on. With input validation, you just look at the input and see, does it follow the rules? Is the data in the correct form? So there are several different types of validation you need to know about. We've got type check. Is the input the correct data type? For example, integer or string. We have a range check. Is the input inside the correct range, e.g. a number from 1 to 10? We've got something very simple like a presence check. Has input been entered? So maybe the user has put their name in or their email address in, or maybe they just pressed enter. I need to check to make sure there has been something entered. We have a format check. Is the input in the correct format? If you think something like dates, there's lots of different ways you could enter it. Day, day, month, month, then four years, or day, day, month, month, and two years. Or maybe you want to enter it in the American system where it's month, month, day, day, year, year. All these things you need to think about and check before you continue with the program. You've got a length check. Is the input of the correct length? So, for example, barcodes are typically 13 digits. A UK telephone number is typically 11. So if you're entering a UK telephone number and you enter 9 digits or 20 digits, it's certainly going to be wrong, and your program needs to be asked the user to repeat that to double check. However, validating data does not guarantee that the data is accurate. It merely checks that the data conforms to the rules for that input. What does that mean? Well, think about entering a telephone number. Either accidentally or deliberately, the user might enter the wrong telephone number. As long as it's the right length, input validation isn't going to know whether they've entered a true phone number or not, just whether that phone number is, say, the appropriate length. So, for example, maybe I accidentally make a mistake when entering my telephone number, and at the end I say 43 instead of 34. Again, input validation isn't going to check up on that. It's just going to check, is this number the correct length? Yes, then continue. It's not going to guarantee the accuracy of that telephone number. If you're looking for something like that, this is what we call data verification. This is the process of ensuring that the user types in what he or she intends. Data verification might be asking the user to enter important information like a password or email address twice, then you can check that they're the same. For something like an email address for data verification, you could also send the user an email and they have to click on it and prove that it's a real valid email address before they can log on to the system for the first time. So data validation does not equal data verification. So let's look at some examples of validation in Python. Here is a simple program. The user has to enter a number between 1 and 10. And you can see the program will keep asking me to enter a number between 1 and 10 if I enter something that's outside that range, as you can see here. So a very simple example of validation here. You can also do that for something like division by 0. It's pretty easy to have a look at the divisor, check whether it's 0. If it is a 0, then you don't want to do the calculation because that's going to crash the program. So you can see here the divisor is called num b. I'm going to check if num b is equal to 0 before I do any calculations. So in that way, if I enter a 0, it'll just give me a nice error message rather than crashing the program. So that's a very simple bit of code. That's, you can do this in a much nicer way. Um, but again, just showing you an example of very simple validation. So in summary, hopefully now we can describe what defensive design is and why we need it. And we can talk a little bit about input sanitization and input validation. I will continue with the defensive design in the next video. Good luck with your studies, and I'll see you then.